So my name is Sony Gonzalez, and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions and Records um, at Cerritos College. So what I wanted to show you today was um, some information that first-time college students like you all should know. So basically, we have on our webpage on the School Relations uh, website, we have these steps for um, the steps that you can follow along um, as you're seeking admission to Cerritos College. So first and foremost, what we like you to do is go ahead and apply to the school. Um, and there is a YouTube video available um, to walk you through each and every step of applying to Cerritos College. But basically, you'll want to apply first to the college. You can go to www.cerritos.edu, and then there's this Apply Now button. As an added bonus, uh, for anyone who is interested in our early success program, um, for first-time college students, you can receive what we consider a fall priority enrollment um, appointment if the admission, so you have to apply to the college. You'll complete what we call a self-report tool. And then of course, you'll do the Falcon Edge orientation steps. So if you do all of that by May 1st, uh, you are guaranteed an, an earlier enrollment appointment. So um, if you can or are interested in participating in that program, I, I strongly suggest that you do. So once you apply to the college, um, and here is a link available as well, this is the information you will see. So if this is your first time attending any California Community College, you're going to create an account um, with CCC Apply, and you'll create your open CCC account. Once you've created your account, um, that account remains with you. And then of course, you can use this account to apply to any California Community College. So from here on in, then you would just click sign in after you've created your account. There is a two-part process to applying to Cerritos College. You will submit an application to the OpenCCC account. You'll get um, a confirmation number, and then you still have to go through and finish up the application and actually apply to Cerritos College, where you will receive <clears throat> a different uh, com application confirmation number. Please make note of these items as you walk through the application, as if you ever have any issues or questions along the way, our office can help answer those questions, um, and it is helpful if you have your application or confirmation number so we can find you in the account. Getting back to our admissions page. When you're applying to the college, um, it is best, um, it is recommended that you send all official transcripts to our college. Um, you'll send them directly to our office, the admissions and records office. We accept, um, official transcripts via email or via hard copy if you'd like to mail them to our office. It is not require, a requirement for you to send official transcripts or any college transcripts, but we do strongly recommend it as, as it is helpful for us to keep track of your record and help you with the enrollment process. So official transcripts could be high school transcripts. They could be college transcripts um, if you participated in dual enrollment. They could be AP test scores. So for those of you who have taken AP classes and taken the AP test, we would like to see those scores as well um, if you got a three or higher. So that is what we would consider an official transcript. And again, you can email them right here to admissions-info at cerritos.edu, or you can mail them directly to our office. On our page, we also have an application tutorial video, which like I said, will walk you through each and every step of the application process. If you have any questions along the way, please feel free to reach out to this admission type in info at cerritos.edu email, and we, our office will assist you um, with any necessary steps. We also have a list of admissions criteria if you would like to check your admissions criteria. So for most of you, you'll probably most likely qualify as a first-time college student um, if you're coming directly out of high school. So then, um, you would just follow along in this information. If you have any questions about what type of student you are, you know, if you think you qualify for a different um, application option, please feel free to reach out to our office and we can help um, you work out through that process. Um, for those students who may be undocumented, um, please be aware that we also offer um, an opportunity to pay in-state tuition. We call this opportunity um, AB 540. So basically, um, if you are not a US citizen, um, 
but you have attended and graduated from a California high school. You must have attended at least three years and have graduated from a California high school. You may qualify for AB 540, which means that you would not be charged the out-of-state tuition. Um, you would be able to pay the in-state tuition, which is a significant difference um, when affording college. So again, if you have any questions about whether or not you qualify, please feel free to reach out to the admissions and records office. Um, there is also some information listed about AB 540. Um, if you attended, if, if it wasn't just high school, if you've also attended a California, um, like K through 12, um, adult school or primary school, that would also help qualify as long as you did end up graduating from a California high school. And that includes GED um, completion as well. So any questions about that, um, I highly encourage you to take advantage of the AB 540 process um, if you are eligible. Once you do apply to our college, um, we strongly recommend that you also submit your FAFSA or DREAM Act application, depending on which one applies to you. And there's, of course, some information here um, for those of you who are looking for, for more details. But typically, you want to submit your admissions application to Cerritos College, submit your FAFSA or DREAM Act application. And then um, once you do that, you'll be able to, about 24 to 48 hours from applying to Cerritos College, you will be receiving an email from the college welcoming you and giving you your student ID number. There's also login information that you can use to go ahead and log into what we call your My Cerritos student portal. In your student portal is where you can keep track of your grades, your transcripts, you can make a payment, you can look at your class schedule, you'll pick out classes. So it's very important um, that you keep an eye out for that email after you apply to our college. Part of that process, once you apply, you'll receive the email. Many of you will have to complete what we call the self-report tool. Um, it's, it's called SRT for short. It will be in your student portal that we call My Cerritos. We have an instructions page on how to access the My Cerritos portal. But basically what you'll wanna have handy when you go and complete this process is a copy of your high school transcript in front of you. And that way you can enter the information from your transcripts right into um, the SRT. The SRT um, is an opportunity for students to place into English, reading, math, or ESL courses uh, based on your high school records. Um, and again, this can all be done right in your My Cerritos portal. So you'll log right in and it's usually at the bottom right. If you have any questions during the SRT process, you can please feel free to reach out to the Assessment Center for more information. And on that note, I will hand it back over to our student ambassadors um, so they can go over the orientation steps with you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Raymond Canada. I'm a student ambassador here in Cerritos College. Hi, my name is Aaliyah, and I'm also a student um, ambassador at Cerritos College. Um, we're going to be talking about the third step, which is Falcon Edge. Raymond. Now, um, after you do steps one and two, you you are going to do step three, which is the orientation. Now, the orientation is a two and a half hour presentation, which will include like um, vital information for you as a student here in Cerritos College. Um, the, in that orientation, the counselors will um, show you like um, what's it like being like a Cerritos College student. Um, what are like the, they'll also show you like what are the uh, guides and we'll also show you like uh, different links and like programs that you might want to like go into as a student in Cerritos College. And like lastly, we will also show you how to enroll like the step-by-step -step on how to enroll in your classes during the breakout sessions. After that, um, we will, you will have like a uh, one-on-one -on -one counseling appointment with the counselor, which uh, Ms. Elia will explain. So here, as you can see, if you read through it, um, the, the third step of the enrollment process does require two um, individual steps. So um, Raymond was talking about the Falcon Edge orientation, which you will be meeting 
with maybe one or two counselors. However, for step two, it is mandatory for you to go and meet a counselor one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes. Um, during that one-on-one -on -one counseling meeting, you will be creating what we call an educational plan with a counselor. So you could pick any counselor um, as long as the time frame is um, available to you. And you will create this application or you will create this appointment during the actual Fox and Edge orientation. So we'll give you the link. And here um, you can select whichever counselor and then you'll meet them um, for the one-on-one -on -one counseling meeting. And it's really important to get that one-on-one -on -one 30 minute counseling meeting because um, in your My Cerritos account, you actually have an orientation hold at the moment once you apply and only a counselor can remove that hold. And so any hold in your system will unable you to um, enroll to classes. So it's really important to get that hold removed. And so it's pretty easy as long as you go and talk to a counselor and they could discuss with you um, what classes you take for your either summer or fall semester. So make sure to go to your Falcon Edge orientation workshop as well as your one-on-one counseling meeting. Now, after you do this process, you will go and move on to step four, which um, Sonia will talk now. Yes, thank you. So we'll, uh, let's go back and so we just talked about orientation. So now we're gonna talk about um, the final steps, um, enrollment and counseling. So basically just to recap, you'll want to apply to Cerritos College, wait about 24 to 48 hours um, to receive an email saying that you have been accepted to the school. It will have your student ID number and login information to your student portal. You'll then want to do your SRT process, um, which can be done right in, in online in your student portal. Same thing um, with signing up for orientation. And then once you do that, um, that typically should remove any outstanding holds on your account as a new student. So basically now you are ready to enroll. So every student is assigned what we call a um, enrollment appointment. Uh, the enrollment appointments do vary across uh, the campus. So your appointment may not always be the same as your friends, um, but just be aware that every student does get an appointment, an enrollment appointment um, to select classes and um, reserve your spot in those classes. So you will be able to see your enrollment appointment um, online through your My Cerritos account. You will be able to enroll on that date and time or later. Um, so whatever that date or time is, you wanna keep an eye on that as that is your specific time to go in and actually reserve the spot um, in the classes. Once you do enroll online from My Cerritos, um, your tuition and fees will, will automatically calculate uh, based on your residency status. So what we mean by residency status is um, uh, most of you probably have either been in the state of California uh, for at least the last two years, or you, it's possible you could have just moved to the state of California. Based on how you answer the questions on our online admissions application, the application will determine whether or not it, it decides that you are a California resident or not. So most of the time, once you pick your classes, um, you'll see your fees adjusted based on that status. So for most of you, you should be seeing in-state tuition. For those of you who may be undocumented um, or are not a US, citizen, a US citizen, you may see a different amount of fees. And so if you have any questions about that process, please feel free to reach out to the admissions and records office and we can we're happy to look at your account and make sure that you're being charged um, the appropriate fees. So once you see all of your fees, we highly encourage you to pay your fees, um, whether you're doing that out of pocket or you're going to be using your financial aid. So make sure you're checking on your financial aid status um, so that the way there's no hold up with getting your classes. And then, of course, once you select your classes uh, online for My Cerritos, um, then you'll decide from there um, to get your books um, and things like that. Um, it is very important that you attend a, a, by very minimum the first day of class um, to make sure that you do not get marked as a no-show. Um, so instructors, um, we have lots of students who are trying to take classes, so it's very important that you not only attend all classes, but please be sure to attend the first one 
Um, so you can get um, access to the syllabus, access to the instructor, and things from there. Once you are settled and enrolled in all of your classes, um, it is uh, highly recommended that you meet with a counselor every semester. The reason being is counselors are available to help you decide on a major. Once you've decided on a major, they can help you um, with your course selection and they can assist you with, you know, which courses you should be taking in which order. And so they are available year round to assist you um, with your career goals um, and your educational planning. And of course, we have a link to our counseling department um, to learn how to schedule an appointment. And of course, during these um, remote times, they are available for drop-in advising as well. So again, um, it is not a requirement, but you are strongly encouraged to meet with an academic counselor every semester just to help um, keep you on track and make sure that you're taking the necessary courses um, and you're not taking um, you know, excessive courses. Um, and that way you can get as many classes as possible and transfer if that is your goal. And with that, that was, that was all of our steps. So if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out um, in the chat. We may have a shy group today. Well, we do have one question. Uh -huh. um, it says, uh, for the to-do list, it's asking me for a high school completion and I don't graduate till June. Would it affect me if I turn it in after April 30th? Which application? Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand it. Yeah. Um, let me scroll back up real quickly. Uh, for the to-do list, it's asking me for a high school completion and I don't graduate till June. Would it affect me if I turn it in after April 30th? I believe this person may be asking about financial aid. Mm -hmm. So- I'm trying to confirm mm -hmm. right now. Okay. So, and just to clarify, the admissions application can be uh, completed at any time. So for many of you right now who are still in high school, you can go ahead and apply um, because you might not be attending till summer or next fall and our fall will start in August. So that's perfectly okay that you're still in high school because on the online application, you'll just indicate um, your graduation date. And then of course, you're gonna be applying for either summer 21 or fall 21, depending if you want to start in May or August. And then for FAFSA, there is a deadline. Um, typically, you want to file your FAFSA as soon as possible. So if you know, you know, if you have an idea of which colleges you're going to be going to, um, I strongly suggest that you apply to all of those colleges and then also submit your FAFSA and indicate all of the colleges that you are interested in attending. And that way they will each receive your FAFSA information and can um, package you from there. All right, excellent. Um, next question is, how do we sign up for the orientation workshops? I think that was a Raymond oh. presentation. <laughs> oh, um, in order to sign up for the orientation workshops, let me share my screen. You can go to our, um, in the first time college student area in our website. And then like you can sign up online through this link right here. Like there are like multiple like Falcon Edge orientation workshops. You're gonna see like the scheduling here. And then once you click on that, like you just enter like your student ID and then your um, date of birth, which is your, which will be your password over here and then just click continue. All right, excellent. Um, next question is, uh, so we don't have to enroll in any class yet. We have to do it with the counselors on the one-on-one -on -one meeting, Raymond? So, um, oh, 
So for the orientation, we actually help you um, kind of figure out how to enroll. We show you how to do it, but you yourself are the one who is enrolling. And during the Counseling 101 um, appointment for the 30 minute appointment, you, um, the counselor and you will be creating what you call an educational plan. So they're helping you figure out what classes you need to take, especially if you're already placed into an English class or a math class, they're gonna put it in your record. And also if you decided already on a major, so they'll put a class for your major in your educational plan. So eventually, um, during the orientation, we show you where to find your enrollment date. So at that time, um, before your enrollment date, you can already put stuff in your shopping cart. And we'll explain this more in the orientation, but just um, basically you are the one who's enrolling, not the counselor. The counselor is just helping you figure out classes, but you yourself are the one who's enrolling to classes if that makes sense. All right then, thank you, Aaliyah. Um, next question uh, is they have, they have signed me up for housing even though I live here in Bellflower. Do I talk to a counselor about this? The student has been signed up for housing, is that what you said? Yes, they have signed me up for housing, even though I live here in Bellflower. Do I talk to a counselor about this? Um, the counseling might be a good place to start. Um, typically, we are a we are what we consider a commuter campus, um, so we do have very minimal um, housing availability uh, for students. However, um, if you currently have a safe place to live and access to the internet and technology. Um, then you know it. You can you can stay there, but um, we do have. <clears throat> there is, uh, like I said, some minor housing options available. Um, but yes, counseling would be the place to start for that. Okay, then next question is: If a student starts in the summer, will that affect the Promise Program? Is there a deadline for the Promise Program? Yes, there is. Um, most students in the Promise program will will start in summer um, with a counseling class. Um, at some point, you you have to take this counseling class, um, so it can either be taken in the summer or the fall. Um, there is more information on our Promise program website, and let me pull that up real quick. But yes, they are very big on uh, deadlines because there are a lot of benefits uh, for, for taking part of um, the Cerritos College Promise Program. So let me share this. So on our prog Promise Program website, there is information about the benefits. Um, like I said, some really great benefits. You get your first two years of tuition free. You'll get priority enrollment for at least two years, step-by-step uh, -step assistance, one-on-one -on -one counseling, so many good things. Um, but yes, they have a very strict adherence to deadlines. So you'll wanna keep an eye on their um, requirements. Um, and of course, um, they're very good with communicating with students. So if you ever have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to them directly. But yes, you must adhere to all deadlines um, to participate in the Promise program. All right, excellent. Next question, can we meet with any counselor? I'm assuming this is in reference to the 30-minute uh, uh, session for the Falcon Edge orientation. Uh, yeah, uh, once you get the link for the 30-minute one-on-one counseling appointment, you will be able to choose like a counselor, like any counselor on the list, like any counselor available on the list. All right, then. Uh, next question. Um, are we going to school physically or virtually? <laughs> Good question. Um, so right now, uh, for the rest of summer 21, we are scheduled to be uh, mostly online. Um, fall 21, we are looking to go back um, 
halftime. So there will be some availability for on-campus courses um, co combined with online um, access. So for the most part, we are still mostly in a virtual world. Okay, excellent. We have another question. Um, who do I reach out to for the, for the class fees? Or if, if you have any questions, um, the tuition amounts are listed on our website, but like, let's say you've, you've submitted an application and you're looking at your classes and you think you're being charged incorrectly or you have questions about what you're being charged for, please feel free um, to reach out to um, admissions-info at cerritos.edu. And we'll be happy to take a look at your account um, make sure, you know, as an example, if you accidentally clicked on something on the application and it indicated that you're a non-resident of California and you're like, I've been here my entire life, I've, I've gone to high school here, um, our office is happy to review your account and make any changes as needed. All right, excellent. And um, we have a uh, guest in chat right now. Um, students can also set up an appointment through the counseling department website, in addition to the Falcon Edge orientation. Let's see here. Um, another question. Do you know if cosmetology will be in person? Um, right now, I do believe they're still online. Um, for specific department related questions, um, if you would like to reach out to admissions info at cerritos.edu, we'll be happy to put you in contact um, with the specific department. Um, this is an unusual time right now as we are making the transition from our virtual world back to on campus. So every department might be just a little different. So we were happy to provide you direct department contact information so you can reach out to those faculty members and, and follow up with them to see if their classes are in person or online. The easiest way um, to start is to just go online and look at our class schedule. And on our class schedule, you'll see you know if it's online, if it's hybrid. Um, if it says hybrid, that means you'll be some online, some in person. Um, so the easiest way would be to take a look at our class schedule first, and then if you have any deeper questions, please feel free to reach out. Okay, and that, that is excellent because we have an additional question. Where do I go to schedule and select my classes? Okay, um, so ultimately you'll be, um, you can look at the class schedule at any time. That's just open on our website. Um, it's called Schedule Plus. Um, once, so that's one way of looking at the class schedule. The other way is when you're logged into your student portal, your My Cerritos account. Um, in this account, you'll also have access to the class schedule. So it just looks a little different. You'll be able to actually pick your classes and put, put items in your shopping cart. I'm sure many of you are available with online shopping. You put things, you, you gather what you like, what you like to see, and then you put them all in your shopping cart, and then you finally hit the submit button. So what you can do is once you gain access to your student account, you can go online, put things in your shopping cart, and then when that enrollment appointment um, date and time is assigned to you, on that day and time or later, you'll be able to actually um, enroll in those classes that you had listed in your shopping cart, assuming they are still open. All right, excellent. Uh, and I'm afraid that's all the time we have for questions as of right now. Um, let's. Uh, move over to Adriana. Adriana, you ready? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Adriana. I want to share a little bit of a PowerPoint that I have created for you all. So today I'm going to be talking to you about online schooling and kind of what it's like to be in online school. So a little bit about me. I am a graduate from Cerritos College. I did graduate last Spring 2020, and now I am at the beach, which is at CSULB, and I'm very happy to be with here with you all to tell you a little bit about online schooling. So, what is online schooling like? I can assume that since you are most of you on high school, you guys kind of have an idea of what it's like. But when you're in college, it's pretty similar, but there are a little bit of differences because you do have to create your own schedule. So for me, online schooling has been a little bit challenging 
not only because I'm a full-time student, but also because I am a parent myself. So sometimes you have to juggle between those two roles. But I do wanna say that you're still able to get the knowledge that you need from your classes. I do wanna thank all of the professors who have been able to rearrange their class courses in order to fit our online schooling. Also, I don't know if you all are familiar with Zoom or with Canvas. If not, most of your assignments will be presented in Canvas. And that's where you're gonna be able to submit all of your paperwork. So I also have a little bit of tips on do's and don'ts from Zoom. So I do wanna mention, do arrive to class on time. Although you are in Zoom, you don't wanna be one minute before class or right at the dot of class. And this is because sometimes there are waiting rooms like on this meeting. I don't know who was at the waiting room before entering, but it does take some time for the person who is given the class to notice that you are there. So you might be missing if very important information if you don't arrive on time. So I do wanna suggest, make sure you arrive at least five minutes before class. There's no traffic, so there's no excuse like that. All you have to do is turn on your camera and your computer and then you'll be able to be in class. Also, I do wanna give you a really good tip, which is add your real name and a presentable profile picture. So I don't know what are the codes right now for having cameras on. From my experience at CSULB, there are some professors who cannot force you, but really, really, really motivate you to turn in your cameras. But if you are not gonna turn in your camera, I do suggest for you to put a really good picture. And when I say pre presentable profile picture, think about a picture that you will put maybe in a resume for a job interview or a picture that you're okay with your parents sharing the family. And this is a really good tip because if you're not gonna show your face in the camera, at least you're showing yourself in a picture. So the professor is able to tell who you are. You do wanna be able to build that connection with your professor. So if you're not gonna have your camera, please, I urge you to put a picture so the professor could have a face of the student, okay? Next, try to limit all of your possible distractions. I know we are on a very different times right now where we have to take online schooling and we are at home and sometimes we don't have our own room so we do have to share a space so that is very understandable but just try to do your best to eliminate your distractions like myself i get distracted with my phone so i know when i'm in class i'm going to put my phone away it takes a lot because you you do want to check it and you know you're not going to get caught because you're in zoom but you're paying for your classes, you're gonna miss really important information. So just do it for yourself, okay? So try to avoid distractions. Next, this is very important. Please keep yourself muted until it's your turn to talk. There has been many times that I'm in class and all of a sudden we hear noises in the background and we don't know where they come from. I'm sure you all have seen very funny or not that funny videos online of people who have accidentally left their mics on and then they could hear what's going on in the background. So please make sure you keep it mute. Another one, if you are gonna turn in your camera, I do suggest for you to dress appropriately. I'm not saying wear a tuxedo or wear like, I'm not saying that just kind of like, you're still gonna be seen. So make sure maybe not your PJs, maybe put on just like a t-shirt or a sweatshirt, like whatever you feel comfortable with, but just try not to, um, I think you all know what's appropriately. So just keep it appropriate, okay? And next one will be, be professional in the Zoom chat. Try to avoid profanities, try to avoid pictures on your background that you know there wouldn't be professional. You're still having a classroom. You're still being with your professor. And I think it's, important for you to have some sort of respect for the class because they're also giving you the time. So just try to be professional in the chat. Now, the don'ts, please don't walk around with your device. Don't be taking a class and just walk around your entire house or your room. That's very distractive for other people who might be looking at you. And also that's gonna be distracting for you because you're not gonna be able to concentrate on what the professor is telling you. 
Another one, do not turn music on the TV during your class. Again, that's another distraction. If you do turn your mic on, then everybody's gonna be able to hear your music, but they're not gonna be able to hear the professor. So just don't do that to yourself, the professor and your classmates. And lastly, if a don't, do not have private conversations with classmates in the Zoom chat. You may think it's private, but it's not private. They could retrieve that information. So just avoid yourself the distraction and probably the embarrassment of whatever you might be talking in the class, okay? So a little bit of tips for online classes. I do urge you, please attend all of your classes, although they're online and it's really easy to miss, it's also very easy to attend. So attend all of your classes because you will be missing information if you don't. Lastly, utilize office hours. I know when we are on campus, it's much easier to walk to your professor's office and just see how they're doing, but they're still having office hours right now during online. I myself take all of the advantage of the office hours and I meet with my professors. I do wanna say at least once a week, one of them, because I wanna make sure they know me, I know them, and also that I'm understanding all of the information that it's needed. So please make sure you do utilize the office hours. If you have any questions about any sort of material that your professors are teaching you, take advantage of the office hours and go meet with them. It is not a burden. I actually have found that professors enjoy when there's students who go visit them to talk about the topic. So please take advantage of those um, that that is provided for you. Next, I know this one, it's a little bit of accessibility, but I would say that, sorry, my mom's texting me, but I will say that um, if you're able to try to wear blue light blocking glasses to protect your eyes, again, as a college student, we are on our screens now more than before, and do, we do wanna be conscious about our eyesight. So if you're able to get those, please get them because I myself, after a long day of school, not only do I have to do my homework on computer, take my classes, my eyes start getting tired. So if you're able to get them, I know they're really cheap on Amazon. So just a little for self-care, take care of your vision. Next, plan your weekly and daily tasks ahead of time. I myself have a planner and I also have a calendar on my wall. This is very useful because it helps you stay on track of all of your tasks and you won't forget any deadlines, you won't forget any assignments, and also you're able to prioritize what you should be focusing on before a different task. So make sure you are able to schedule your tasks as well as your assignments. Um, designate time for meals and breakfast. So sometimes it is hard when you have a lot of classes, a lot of homeworks to make sure you are eating and drinking water. So make sure you, I wanna encourage you to create yourself like your own little schedule to say, okay, so today I'm gonna at least have a snack between those two classes, or I'm gonna eat between those two. So you won't forget to take care of yourself as well. That is very important. Now form study groups. I have found this to be very helpful for myself. Now we use, I believe it's called Group Me or, um, oh my God, what's the name of the other one? I wanna say, is it Twitch? Discord, okay, Group Me and Discord. So those two are the ones that we're utilizing now for um, study groups. So if it's okay with your professor, you could all exchange information and create a study group is really helpful now. You could help each other creating your study guides, studying for exams, although you're not in one-on-one, -on -one, you can still have that experience through Zoom or through phone calling or whatever other program you might use. Another one that I do believe is really important, it's a self-care day. Being on the screen for many hours, having assignments left and right can be very draining. And then at the end, you can feel the burnout. So it's very important for you to have a self-care day. I do take at least one day of a week where I don't do anything. No homework, no work, nothing. Why? Because it's good for you to take care of yourself, disconnect yourself from everything, all of the assignments, and then come back the next day. So please make sure you take care of yourself. 
Self-care is very important as well as your mental, um, mental self-care. So please make sure you take care of that. And lastly, have a healthy snack and water available to you. I say healthy snack, but I'm not gonna lie. I am guilty. This is sometimes my snack. Oh, I don't think you guys could see it, but there's Ferrero chocolates. It's stressful right now, finals are coming. So that's my guilty pleasure. When I feel like I'm falling a little bit asleep in the class, I just take a little chocolate or drink a little water and that's gonna keep you awake for the entire class. So please stack up on snacks and make sure you have them available when you're in online classing. So those are my tips. That's a little bit about my experience. If any of y'all have any questions, please feel free to let me know and I'll be more than happy to answer them. The glasses, I see. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. No, it's okay. It's just me. It's me, Maria. Um, I just, I'm monitoring the chat and I don't see anything just yet, but this is just to remind everyone, please feel free to send questions into Adriana. She really did a great presentation. So if you have any questions, if you need any more tips, if there's anything else, please put that in the chat for us. If anyone's excited to attend online schooling. Maybe one tip that I could give you guys that it was not in my presentation. Check on your books on time because if you're going to order them, I think you all, if you've been shopping on Amazon, know how sometimes things are taking a little bit longer right now. So make sure you do check on your books on time. If your professor has not posted their syllabus, you can always email them and just ask them like, Hey, professor, I'm taking your class. What may be a book that, um, that you will be using so then I could order it on time. Also, there is a website, Chegg, where you could get books there as well. Uh, Cerritos has an amazing bookstore where you could have them delivered to you, I believe. And I think they even sometimes have a sell where if you spend X amount in the bookstore, you get free shipping. So you guys want to take a look on those um, So we do have a question, but I don't believe this is for Adriana. I believe this is for Sonia and it's from Andrea who's asking, do we have to enroll in classes now if we're going to fall 2021 semester? And when, uh, when do fall 2021 classes start? Remember to take myself off mute. Uh, yes. Uh, so right now we are open for summer 21. Um, so if you want to apply for summer 21, um, the application is open and enrollment has started. For fall 21, we will begin um, about mid-August and enrollment should open up in about, um, I believe, June, May or June. So um, that's our timeline right now. Okay, so I do see a question. I think that was private to me. So um, I won't say name in case you guys want to stay anonymous. So this one's no biggie. This says, um, what are the glasses called? I send you a link if everybody else wants a link to the Amazon page where I found the ones that I have, I'll put it on the chat. They're also, you could just look it up as blue light glasses. Again, they're really helpful. Um, I use them. When my eyes are getting tired, I actually have them here so you guys can see. Um, because trust me, you will you will feel the strain. So this is it, just glasses, but it does protect you from the light from your computer and it's also gonna protect you from the light from your um, cell phone. So they're very useful. Now, another question that I have is, how do you keep your mindset positive if you're having a tough time staying motivated I tend to be harsh on myself. And when I get distressed, I get negative thoughts and it discourages me. I think this is something we could all relate. I am sorry you're feeling this way, but trust me, I am, I am with you. I am on finals week and close to finals week. And this is at the time where we're starting to feel less motivated because there's so much work that we need to do. But what I always try to come back to is why am I in school? What is my end goal? 
why am I here? Why am I putting myself through this? And when I remember, I want to get a better job. I want to, I want to be able to wake up every morning and say, I'm happy to go to the job that I'm going to. Sometimes that's what motivates me. It's not even how much I'm going to earn. It's because I want to get to that job. I want to get to that position and wake up every morning and be happy. So I might be struggling right now. I might be not sleeping well because I have so much assignments, but I know at the end, I'm going to be able to accomplish the goal. And this is not going to last forever. That's what motivates me. There's other people who feel motivated because they're working either a part-time job right now or an entry job right now where you're getting paid either the minimum or maybe a little bit more than the minimum. And you see, once I have my degree, not only am I going to love to do what I'm doing, but I'm also going to get paid more and I'm going to be able to accomplish all of my goals and dreams that I have. So if that is your motivation, when you're starting to feel those negative thoughts and feel dismotivated, think about that. Think about, you know what? I'm struggling right now. Sucks. Sorry, but sucks. But at the end, I'm going to have more money where I'm going to be able to travel and enjoy or build my empire, whatever your goal is. And also I'm going to be able to wake up every morning and enjoy what I'm doing. So it is hard, but always try to come back to your why you're here, why you're doing it. I hope that helps. And I don't know, but that's what I do. Um, so if there's any more questions, please let me know. I'm here. If not, I do want to thank everyone for your time and for listening to me. I'm very proud of all of y'all who are taking the step to going to college. I know sometimes it's not easy because this time that of the pandemic that we have to do it on online. But I do want to tell you, you're doing a great job. You're taking the best decision you can. There's nothing better than getting an education because that sets you apart from anyone else who might be applying for the same job as you. So congratulations on taking this decision. And I want to wish you nothing but the best on your journey. Thank you so much, Adriana and Sonia, and also to Aaliyah and Raymond who presented for us here today. I just wanted to remind each of you that session two will be starting shortly. So if you wanna head over to your sessions and presentations again, that's on the program that was sent out and that is hyperlink. So you can just click and register and you'll be able to enter your meeting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this session. Thank you all for attending. Bye everyone.